Oh, this is uh, what I was trying to put up, and I didn't get it put up. This is Affordable Corporate Sweetness down the street from me, and this is May the 14th, 2014, and I was in Unit 115, and you should see what happened to me there, just that one time there. Uh, it's so hideous if you get to see it, and it's so shameful. Um... She told me, I'm going to reiterate, I told about mind control murders. And Larry Flint was one of them shot by a person program, but you can cure illness or create it, and that was the Tesla files. And I've just put that up. Uh, I'm going to say one, and this will be two. But I put this up before, but it's about where you can cure illnesses or create it. But now the Tesla files had a lot more in it. And the, the Illuminati uh, had them. And uh, Trump's president, Trump, who's now president, was, anyway, uh, his uncle was MIT graduate, John graduate, a professor, excuse me, uh, at MIT. When these were stolen, 1930. But it's got a lot more to the Tesla files. It's, but anyway, what you would do is do away with most of your medical. <laughs> uh, they've got cures. They can cure it all or create another illness, which th has been done and th thrown in South Africa, you know. By the way, Lizzie Borden, high-ranking member, she is the illegal monarch at my father's, the one that's the honest man, and his name has been so slandered, he never married Wallace Simpson. I'm going to say that again. She married a double, one of the doubles. She's an American spy. This man's Edward Snowden, and uh, he was uh, exiled for telling the truth to Russia. And this young fella uh, killed his mother, he was programmed, and then killed the students at Sandy Hook and was programmed to shoot himself. Now here's my Aunt Georgia O'Keefe. My mom married Edward VIII, my father, not Wallace Simpson. And this is my Aunt Georgia O'Keefe, the artist from um, Madison, Wisconsin. Now, I want to read this. It's important because... I've been run using chemicals. I'm allergic to them. And, uh, oh, they can kill you, believe me. <laughs> you, um, if I'm in a room where it's toxic chemicals or having to inhale them, I have to leave or you have to get rid of it. So this is how they run me, and it causes mass inflammation. So you have to take medicine for the inflammation. Um, now then. Uh, it could take out your liver, and it's already gotten to my heart, okay? And I don't know what other part of my lungs or what at the moment. But here's the letter that Debbie McKay, I was living there, May the 14th of 2014. And I've lived here before. This man owns a whole bunch of uh, uh, apartments, and they're... I'll go ahead and say it. They're nice. They weren't for me. I mean, if you ever see what was done to me. But I managed to, okay, let me just go to this. I moved in there, and she had lived there before, and for the affordable corporate suites. In fact, a state trooper took me there in 09, uh, August the 14th of 09, him and his wife, because I'd been up camping trying to get away from I mean, this is what they've done to me. They've gotten away with it, and everybody would plead they didn't do it, just like this woman. So I was up on um, Campground National Park, and they've closed it now, uh, up by the star. And somebody poured kerosene all over my tent in the middle of the night, and I had to get up and sit on the uh, outside. And... Um, they did that once before with a brand new tent, and I had the, my real tent setting up, and it put the new one inside. I got inside, and while I had been gone for a walk, came back. They had uh, 
poured fuel all over him when I I didn't know it. And I got in, and I had to get back out and went tossed because it's a built up a little, and it's rocks around it. And I was tossed just rolling and hit down the hill and hit a tree. So this is kind of uh, just a one day out of my life, maybe. Anyway, he brought me back, he and his wife, and told me this is how they run me with chemicals. And this is later now. I'd lived in that one, affordable uh, back then, in 09, and stayed, managed to stay there through all this hell and chemicals and spraying deliberately. This wasn't to be clean. This would, is other hard to believe. I'm not even going to put it up here right now again. Let me just get to this. She's, I'm back here at one of them, and it's down the road from me now, uh, really. And um, Alexis Murphy was one of the mind control murders, and she was killed August the 3rd of 1913, um, okay? This is 14 here. And um, I'm going to... To stop here. There's so much that was done here and lies and all of this and my lungs and everything have been affected, kidneys and all, the hearing. Uh, okay, now then, she uh, paid my rent on time and everything. She t put, told me up when I was up there, I don't know if I was paying the rent that day or what, she said, put her daughter's picture around, it was on the computer, and she told me, she said, um, that I couldn't, she wasn't going to take my rent anymore, and I said, uh, well, what if I come up here and stand until you, uh, she said, well, I'll have you arrested for trespassing. So the reason that she gave is not that reason. She uh, knows about the mind control murders. I didn't kill anybody, but that's what she said to me and turned her daughter's picture around off the on the computer in her prom dress back then. This is May of uh, 2014. So now then she puts this on the door to make it official, and she even went later up on YouTube to combat me putting this up, saying I'm lying. Here's what she said uh, here. Put it on my door after telling me that she wasn't going to take my rent anymore. She didn't want her daughter uh, to end up like Alexis Murphy. So she, they very well, all of them know, and they've all done what I've told you. I'm going to read it here. My hand's going numb from using the video, I guess, so much. Uh, this is Debbie McKay, the manager. It says, uh, Peggy Childers. Dear Miss Childers, as per our conversation, you stated that the, and this is, well, yeah, I've told her that the cleaning supplies, you should see what they do. Here they come in and they just, uh, you can't, well, I'm just going to leave it there. I think you get the gist. Oh, they cleaned it all right. I got run with the vacuum cleaner and it hit the, uh, you know, they did everything to me and soaked it to where I would lie there hours after they left, so sick I couldn't get up. As to our conversation, uh, you stated that the cleaning supplies we use were detrimental to your health and could cause a life-threatening situation because you have an immune deficiency. Um, well, it's when I'm around the chemicals and when they're using them as a weapon to kill me that, okay... Uh, my immune system attacks itself. So here, uh, she's using my illness as an excuse when really the chemicals would kill a horse that she put in there on me and used, that they did. This was continued. You'd have to get them up under oath. We are unable to comply with your request to change the supplies we use, forego the monthly exterminating and not clean the carpet and upholstery when scheduled. That's a friggin' lie. While sympathetic to your situation, we are under strict legal, listen to this, regulations from the government, OSHA, and do not intend to change any corporate 
policy, so saying, it would be in everyone's best interest for you to find alternative housing that would be better suited for your needs. You will be allowed to pay for one more week, which will make your check out date on Thursday, May the 22nd, 2014, by 11 a.m. Thank you, Debbie McKay, manager, corporate suites. And this is uh, by Lakeside here in Salem. So she's lied. They all have. It's my understanding that now I've been tossed around so much here in uh, the people who now are wealthy off of it, not just this, uh, the corporate suites, others. Um, it's such a hideous story. And, you know, I'm going to tell you this. When I left Flint's out there, my life it did almost kill me April Fool Day of 80, which is uh, 40 years ago. It was April Fool joke all this, and I should have died. I shouldn't have walked away from it, been able to. When I was flown out to Mr. Flint's then, I'm leaving all the hell out. I mean, you can't put it up. Uh, in 83, to replace Larry McDonald, the doctor, one of them I wrote about, congressman, U.S. congressman. Ask yourself why they don't tell y'all this. Um, I was flown out there twice in October to his home in Bel Air at the time he moved to Beverly Hills. Now I understand. But uh, as I went out the door the last time they had the election and um, I went out the door, he introduced me um, to a movie producer. And I won't go through what transpired the night I was there. Um, it was role-playing, like taking me through, and every room in uh, the place was... Um, Upstairs, the rooms were somebody in them, or there's no place. Here's what he said. The first time I went out there, I went to the uh, lily pad room. So you have code, is all I can say, that connects some of this, and the Jeremiah. One day, maybe if you hear it, you will. Uh, anyway, this is the second time in the election, and I'm leaving to go back to Atlanta, and uh, he is going to furnish me a car. Uh, and he did for a year, but I had no money, I nothing. I, I pumped gas for a living with a car sitting behind the, how ludicrous. Nobody do anything about all this, but that's just a, a irony. What's wrong with this whole picture? So now where did I get to? Flint, when I went out the door the last time, last time I saw him, movie producer stood up, Mr. Flint's in a wheelchair, paralyzed from here down. Um, Mr. Flint introduced me to him, and Mr. Flint said, there's no room in the inn. Now, I-N-N, E-N-D. I, um, after the car was gone and everything, I was back on the street living in the forest, and this is what's happened to me, been run with chemicals. And to have this woman give me this letter, and I'm telling you about these murders because I cared. And um, they can be proven. Oh, yeah, there's some that happen right here that you can prove. It can be proven. You just put it up. And by the way, they go after me. All I've done is tell the truth. And uh, I'll leave it at that, Debbie McKay. Well, maybe not. Maybe there's God, and it's the only one it can see to excuse me. No room in the end, because you and all the rest of you need thrown into jail, prosecuted. You've lived high on the hog at my expense. Under oath, and then put you away for good where you belong. <laughs>